Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remain. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team ban. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remain. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Oh, no. Reserve time. Uh Reserve time. Wait. Oh yeah. That rate hey, is, is this a support skill thing? I believe so. Hmm. It's either a support clock or a support skill. I just feel like that hero is so underwhelming as a carry when you're up against these liquid heroes. Invoker. Im also, picking Wraith King's a little risky against Invoker, because that Mana Bird can just ruin you. It definitely is. I think, like, picking him versus an Invoker is one of the scarier things. And that's where making him a support probably makes more sense, because, like, sure, maybe he dies, doesn't Mana, but running him as a core, that can very easily be fun. But if he gets BKB, then you can kind of show up that true. weakness. But, yeah, generally, you don't want to make too many Mana Burns. Clockwork, Invoker, and Excess is the popular three, I'd say. Five Brian seconds is, remaining. Eh, he's kind of there. Anti-Mage kind of crushes Wraith King, Die but kind of I mean, very much so. Yeah, and Anti-Mage this game, Liquid have set up decently where they could look to run it. Ichi don't have much proper lockdown here. There's the Wraith King stun, and that's maybe familiar stun's hookshot, but... Mm -hmm. I guess they do have some flexibility here with the last Ten pick. Maybe they remaining. go for something that has a little more crowd control. Uh, uh, one other hero that Arteezy's been playing a lot of lately remaining. is the Morphling as well. Yep. Do you... Do you hmm... I like How do you think Morphling matches up this game? I think he's time. really good because they don't have any silences. If he gets lassoed, he can just tank up, no problem. Team, if he man. gets swapped and stunned, no problem either. He won't do that great versus Invoker, but it'll be good enough. Um, I think Evil Geniuses will tend to do something that is pretty heavy late game. Morphling is the obvious choice. I'm trying to think of any other carries, farmers, Ten in the solo menu that Arteezy likes to run that aren't banned. And there aren't many left. They banned four Five pretty much Arteezy remaining. heroes. Hmm, what else was he running? There's, there's he plays like, Naga a lot. He plays the Naga's Naga. band, though. Yeah, yeah. So all, all, I mean, most of them are banned. On the Morph's band. Okay, that's they, five Arteezy yeah, bands, man. So what's left? Um, hmm, OD. OD? Okay, yeah. OD's, OD's good enough here. You don't life steal off of the orb, though, do you? From the no, escape? you don't. No, just from the... So it's, it's not right quite place. as good, I guess, but... He is also good versus Roche, and with Wraith Kane and OD and Familiars, they could take Roche pretty early, potentially. Mm -hmm. A little tricky against It's Bat. just out of favor, I yeah. think. That's it, it. I, I still think it's a strong hero. Oh, it's definitely a strong hero. It's just... Ten seconds I don't, remaining. I don't, I, I'm, I'm as confused as they are. Well, they do have a minute and a half in the reserve It's time. not often a team remaining. will five heroes that one player runs. Yeah, we can look at his profile. Let's see. What do you like to run? Reserve time! I think we'll see Punch. I think that's a pretty safe no here. His top three successful heroes, Shadow Feet Invoker, Nature's Prophet. 
Naga Naga. Oh, boy, this is not what I expected. What is he it? has run Weaver bits once in a while. He has run Weaver Oh, bits. yeah. This is so true. it could be an RTZ Weaver. That's the other possibility. This was back when he was playing for speed. He used to play uh, Weaver a fair amount. So Razor. That actually synergizes pretty well with Wraith Kane, right? You steal all that damage and then your life stealing it back. Yeah, it's at the same time, nice it's like it's, there's no good hero to use it on. And Liquid hasn't picked their melee carry yet. Yeah, it will this definitely. This is a four range lineup. Yes. It, it will definitely destroy the life stealer pick. So no infest bombs, or very unlikely to be infest bombs. Five seconds remaining. I mean, Team Liquid does have a lot of single target spells. Rubik with three, Ventral with two, so the unstable spell would be decent, but most Razors go for BKB anyways. Looks like the Drow Ranger will be the last pick. No surprise there. But Drow Ranger, Silence, very good versus Weaver. Other than that, I mean, Wraith King can just be up in her face, but it looks like it will be a solo mid Razor. A safe lane weaver and a support rate game. So a lot of our questions have been answered. Well, I do like the Drow in terms of they have five ranged heroes and they have the Venjara. So this team will be packy to punch. In theory, now the one concern is that whenever you run Drow, you really want to stay away from the enemy teams. Your team gets the bonus damage. Obviously, your squishing easily killed off and. That's where if SK gets a Blink Dagger, you've got Clockwork with Hookshot, they've got some gap closers. Even Weaver will just probably look to jump the Drow once he gets the items out. And it will be Mason playing that, so Arteezy will take his, his talents remaining. to the middle lane. Mm -hmm. Is he going to play versus Bulba? Maybe, they, maybe the Hero Swap is the other possibility. Razor Vogue versus Vogue, eh, seems pretty fair. Oh, I was really... I was going in deep there, man. All right. Well, what... And well, we'll introduce it's the teams here now. It's Liquid okay, versus EG, yourself. one of the biggest matches for Starlighter America. Only one of the eight teams, Starlight America, can go to Kiev. Who's it going to be? Maybe we'll find out with this game here. You've got Zai handling the support Wraith King. Mason standing in for fear, playing that carry Weaver. Universe on the Clockwork. Arteezy will be taking the Razor mid. PPD on the Visage. And then over to Team Liquid. A team that has looked lost at times as of late. We won't get too much into the fluff blog, but they've had some problems. Struggling to kind of recapture their identity. You've got way too on your Venge here. No longer doing the drafts. TC on the Drow. Uh-oh. Now he'll spot them out. Should be able to back off. Fluff playing the Rubik, though. Oh, drops the ward there. He'll retreat. Are they going to cut him off? Did uh, they see him place the ward? Did they have sentries? I think they... Someone saw him. I mean, they no, had a... No one has sentries, though. They'd someone... Com I forget who it was Stay now. But they'd someone... 30 seconds until we are tested by combat. But, uh, yeah, no sentries anyway. And, well, TC on the Drow, I already mentioned. We've got Bulba going mid. Boots first. Exhort Invoker. He is expecting to get roamed on hard. Poik for that rider. Well, I, actually, I guess the boots is just for the razor. Then he wants to be able to break the link easier. Mm. You know, it used to be that like when when we saw a lot of OD razor mid, razor play OD players started going boots so that they could get break the link easier. Then razor players started going boots so that the link couldn't be broken so easily. But Artezia hasn't gone boots, so this could turn out to be a problem for him in terms of stealing a lot of damage. Yeah, at the same time, razor he's still decently strong even without static link. I think plasma field's a very underrated nuke in that mid lane. Yeah. Uh, there was a period where players were just like skipping the nuke entirely against OD. You know, you right. might not have mana, so you just skip it, max the the two pass the unstable current and the static link. But well, he's not against OD this game, so it's also where I'm interested to see how strong Liquid get in the mid game. If they do get their items up, Ben, they have what the damage output here, just from the Drow aura, the Venge aura, as well as the Forge Spirit. So Liquid have a lot of damage. My only concern is can they stay alive. They have a very good road line. It looks like Koikvo will get stunned out here already. He's got boots. He should be okay, but he hasn't skilled Firefly yet. He really just reluctant to use it, I guess. Well, he goes into the trees. Now he'll be forced to pop it. I don't I don't, I don't know why he decided he, to take so much damage there. Yeah, if he had a salve, maybe. But yeah, he took a lot of damage. Didn't really And he really used it anyway. That. Yeah. That hurts. Well, Universe is cogging in the creeps here. Uh, we have not seen Liquid. You know, one team's... One thing that teams have done with that in the past is just firefly over these trees to break it so that he can't stack creeps back there, but we're not seeing it. And actually, he's he's forced to block the wave really far back. Yeah, and he's still in a very critical HP range, only using one of his four tangos. Looks like EG will have the better ward placement, though, at the start of this one, not spotted out by the sentry, and the radiant supports will not have access to that pool, and they don't really have any good junglers, too, so they may very well be underleveled if they can't get any early kills. Razor actually going for the non static link build. Yeah, and that's where Fluff, he wants to walk in mid, but there's a Dire Observer ward here. He's already been spotted anyway, because it is daytime, and he might try to harass Arteezy, but, well, he can't really do much. Arteezy's like, what are you up to, buddy? You're a level 1 Rubik. Come at me. 
Oh yeah, he has a ton of stats too. Four strengths or five strength feathers, so very unlikely to die early. Especially for an exhort invoker, you're not really scared until he gets like maybe level four-ish. Yeah, and um, we'll, we'll see. Pull, but for so far, it does appear to be. I guess the thing with the exhort build this game is they're more just counting on it for like the aura, where you just get like the familiars in the mid game. You can pop the drow ult and just push really hard. But well, I'm taking a lot. They don't have much synergy for the Sunstrike. Actually, pulls Arteezy in here. Another bold. If there was a point in Static Link, I feel like that might have been a kill opportunity for Arteezy. Yeah. But he doesn't have it, so. But yeah, there's not. I was just thinking, like, there's not really much Sun Strike setup. I guess there's the Venge stun, the Rubik stun, but. Lasso. Yeah. But that's more, like, mid game oriented, even. Because this Rubik and Venge do want to get their levels up. Mm hmm. They're and. Pretty level dependent. No one's really getting levels on Liquid. Quake Bus still sitting at level 1. Venge sitting at level 2. Just at level 2. And Rubik's sitting at level 2. He does have an invisibility rune. Still trying to harass out Arteezy, but Arteezy's at full HP. He does have one level of unstable current, so I don't think they can kill him. I mean, what do you think about their decision making here? Because most teams in this situation would just start stacking the jungle. Like, sure, they saw EG go into their woods, but they know that they didn't cross this line. Like, they definitely didn't go, uh, you know, in deep into the woods. So there's at least two camps to stack. And I guess they may, they've, they've had some trouble with the failed D ward, as you mentioned, but he's just sitting mid and not doing anything. I guess Arteezy's playing a bit more defensively, but mm -hmm. he's, he's getting his levels. He's still 8-1. I don't feel like Pop is doing enough to justify this. Yeah, Arteezy is still out leveling Boba 2 just by a tiny bit. And maybe if they can get a kill opportunity, but Artis is not really trading for Raz with Boba. He's still sitting at 700 HP. I think they need to get him down to like the 500 HP range. Where Look he's at close this, to kill man. Level. They're just so... Everybody. This is a hate train. They banned five of the man's heroes. And then they four man him in. And they've seen way to make this rotation. And Arteezy comes in, he's like, hello, buddy. Universe is here. This is going to be a first blood. There's cogs available. Way to nothing to do but just beat away a kill. It begins. That was just a very... Rotate I mean, four heroes in and still give up first blood. And yeah, and the top lane's pushing as well. So, the so there's some experience being missed here. Although it looks like they did another pull to draw back. I don't think it's that important to shut down a Razor this early. I, it's I, important I, to shut down Arteezy in general, but this is not really an Arteezy hero, right? It's, you know, like if he's running Tinker or Shadow Fiend, like a more snowball hero, it would make a lot of sense, but he sh he's Razor. Razor's not that scary. And he went a defensive build too with the early unstable current. That's and, true. I mean,. It's just not easy to kill him, and it's not that important. You still have to worry about this Weaver, you still have to worry about everybody pulling on top. Raid King already level 3, Visage getting there, and their supports are just going to be, like, they're not going to have their ultimates until maybe like 12 minutes. It's not just the supports, it's the Boy bat. on Arteezy. Yeah, he picks up a haste, but nothing he can really do against the Razor. If you run on him, he just starts doing your damage. But it's not just the supports, Ben, it's the bat. They haven't stacked the woods a single time for him. It's already 4 mm -hmm. minutes in. These could be quad stacks, but he's got nothing. Now, now the first round comes 3G, and this one is going to be a success. Bulba eats the stun of the face. Damage being stolen, no points at wax, and he'll go down. Gets off the cold snap here. Maybe the Forge Spear can get the kill. Zai on the way out, but that early SK rotation, much more effective, and it only took one hero. Yep, and Quick Buzz coming back to mid, but now he won't be able to stack, it looks like. So, yeah, all in all, this Liquid early game is going very, very poorly. Already, we see 2,500 experience lead and a 1,500 gold lead for EG. Meanwhile, top is just completely uncontested. And can Drow Ranger really do that much? I don't think so. I don't like Drow. She's just, in this game, EG have good gap closers. They'll have an SK with a blink eventually, I imagine. They already have the clockwork. And the I, Weaver, I feel like there's like always gap closers though. Yeah, like what game of Dota doesn't have them? But right. if they do, then that's where Drow's just kind of eh. She's she's okay. She's like not terrible. She I... needs so much farm to win like 1v1s as well. Yeah. Which is why you see players like Envy, they just go for the like, I'm never gonna be near an enemy hero build unless I'm chasing them with Mask of Madness, Blink Dagger, but Midas. Good luck staying away from Weaver and Clockwork. Let and alone potentially Wraith the Blink as Wraith King, yeah. I keep yeah. on calling him Skeleton. She's also just, I mean, she gets HOD, doesn't really synergize that well with her orb. I mean, you can like hit it on and off, but I don't know. It's just, there's something I don't like about that hero. A lot of things, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> I did like the change to Gust. It gives her like a slight yes. position, but it's still yes. not enough. The hero just feels underwhelming. Stay sharp. And like, oh, Quakefist's gonna miss his stack now, so do they, I think they'll just barely, yeah, they'll get this off, but it's Gollum, so. On top of just poor efficiency from Liquid, now they've got some bad luck going their way as well. Missing the one stack here for Koikfa, getting Golems here. They, I mean, already they're down 3,000 experience. This is a, they've given up two kills and they're down attack. two takes. That is a ridiculous deficit for this early in the game. And they have the worst late game too. 
And EG are playing it well. I mean, EG are just relaxed. Radiant They're on the dire side. They know they've got the SKR. They'll have familiars later on. They can go for Roche fairly early this game if they take a few effective fights. And you look at their offlaner, Universe is level 5. So he's getting his levels up. Oh, and they, he doesn't need a big item to jump in and start the fight. So, yeah, Liquid are, they have their backs up against it already. And we're only 6 minutes in. Yeah, I think a lot of it just stemmed from that early level 1 smoke where they gain control of Liquid's jungle before the crease even spawn. Because it forces supports to do something that they don't want to do, which is try and get a kill on a very difficult to kill hero in mid, and not just get easy levels, not get easy stacks for Batrider. Yeah, they st again, they still could have stacked these camps, though. Oh, he missed the stack here, too. So, yeah, just a lot of things not going oh, well. Oh, bottom lane, there is a stun here. They initiate on Fluff. In comes the, the Drow Silence, the Gust, but it's just not enough. And Quaypo will be next. It looks like there's another stun. He pops his fire for the Golden Roach and flies by as he watches the bat burn. He'll hightail it out of there, but well, the, what does Drow do here? He tries to finish your Midas and not die, I guess. But even with her Midas, like, there's... It, they need way too many items right now. They need a blink on Batrider, which is not coming anytime soon. They need big items on Invoker. He's also going for Midas, and I think that Ishii, they have the lineup that they can just continually exert pressure on Liquid and not really let them farm up with the Midas and catch up. I mean, look at these two supports. Look how aggressively they're playing. Yeah, and they, it's a lot because they just know how poor Liquid are, and I like this a lot from EG. They're ahead. Let's get even more ahead. The Midas comes out now. Some Artosis Dota from EG. Meanwhile, they'll dive mid. In comes I with the stun. The five in the field, I think, just barely missed him on the way back, but Volvo will still fall. Doesn't matter. That was just an easy kill. I'm liking the Wraith King. He's, I think he's a very good roaming support. He's tankier than heroes like Ben. He still does a lot of... His, his nuke is quite strong compared to other stuns because it's got the slow component as well. Mm -hmm. So I think he's in... I think Wraith is, okay. is he better than Ven? As a rumor? Radiant's he's definitely an, I feel he's just an awful carry though. Like maybe you could run in like the way CIS do and China is just like a frontline tank more than a carry, but Yeah. Yeah, I feel Radiant's like most of the roles is just under attack. Yeah. He's okay. I'm he's still okay. not a huge fan of the Wraith Kane, but they're making it work. Uh, yeah, we've been wrong before. Radiant's maybe we'll be wrong with the Doom. Attacked. <laughs> yeah, he's the Doom counter, man. Yeah, that's that's true. And Liquid now, are, look at just how defensively they're playing. They're four heroes bottled up mid, and this leaves TC on an island bottom. And he's about to die, it looks like. He's just bought his Midas. Observer gets plopped down, and the rocket scouts him out. Will there be a quadruple TP reaction? It ain't gonna matter. He'll just melt. Wow. Easy kill. Very easy hero to bring down. He, this did is spend, with, he did spend a skull before he died. Yeah, he bought the Midas, but this is a lot of value being lost. Not actually using it. I guess he they needed to fly it out, so it's, it's just a free TP, time. man. It works out beautifully. Not so beautiful for Liquid. Things are not sunny right now in Liquid Land. I wonder how they get their first kill. Ooh. Well, they have Sunstrike, and they'll have... It seems they a pattern that Brady has chosen to strengthen mm. their structures. They'll have the Blink Dagger. Like, at some point, they'll get a kill. Oh, I know. I, know. I was just wondering over-under. I would say within two minutes after the Blink is picked up. That's that's a long time. That's like that's like 14 minutes. Yeah, like 13, 14. Radiance minutes. bottom tower is under attack. Well, Mason has his Midas up. 1,200 gold to boot. Yeah, he's had it. This is the second usage, I believe. So that was a very fast they Midas. They made a beeline for Radiance bottom tower. to do ancient at this point. I mean, like you mentioned, EG took over their jungle, but they've kept control over it. They've actually driven Radiance the drought off the bottom lane. Under Bulb was afraid to go into the woods, and so they're tri laning top. But they're doing it with these rather underlevel supports. You go poorly if there's a rotation, which there is right now. Arteezy comes in, Invoker has just picked up his Midas, and they're gonna smoke to try and retreat quicker. Liquid, no, they're in trouble. The smoke barely gets them out of range. But in comes Arteezy regardless. The slow's there on Fluff. Now out comes the Swarm. And did he just drag him towards him? I think he dra it dragged him like this way. Oh boy. Well, oh, the dive continues. TC will be next. Drow to such food. Oh. Oh boy. Boy. Oh, boy. They're in a lot of trouble. And they, they just blew a smoke to try and escape and still lost two as well. Yeah, the hook shot near They have two Midas's, but EG have a Midas of their own, and EG are gonna start taking towers now. And once these towers start falling, as Bulba could be next on the list, Zai thinking about a stun. The drow silence here comes out there, but Bulba. Don't be okay for now, Sun to fly. It is going to connect, but it's Freddy even leaving between two. Now Blake's about dragging one in, but he's going to throw his life away. Arteezy posting up, not trying to avoid the flames as he retreats back out. Universe, TPing home. He does need a heal here. We'll lift in TPD. But already there's an SKO. He can go ham here. Peasants. 
fear me. He goes in with the slow, and now the sub will follow, and that's another easy kill. Another peasant crushed beneath the Wraith King's boot. <laughs> I like his voice, uh, his voice acting. Have you played him recently and heard his voice? It's pretty Did fun. they change it from Skeleton King? Um, I'm not sure. I, I like the old Skeleton King acting. Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty good. He has some good lines. This is a weird looking race skin though. That's an ugly ass mask. I think it's one of the new sets. Okay. He has a big sword. So this is pretty much Roche. Like, I don't see how Liquid can test this. No Blink Dagger on the bat. No Quaswex Invoker to control around the pit. And they have two Midas's. They, they just have to forfeit a Roche. Whenever EG wants it, it's there for the taking. Gold lead's only 10,000. What's that? Gold lead's only 10,000. <laughs> what you delivered as like, wait, I've got to do a double take here. <laughs> yeah, only 10k at 11 Radiant minutes. It's almost the vaunted 1,000 gold deficit per minute accrued mark. Yeah. That is the sign of just getting crushed. But, you know. If EG gets sloppy, they can get They can turn this around. And they don't have their bat blink yet. In fairness, they have a very good damage-based lineup with the Auras, so if they can somehow protect the ground, they'll hit hard, but it's a lot of ifs right now for Liquid, and for EG, it's pretty much just this guaranteed Roche going the way. Liquid try to fight this. This could go very poorly. Already, there's a Drums out on Arteezy. Aquila's up as well. A lot of early to mid-game items. They will smoke. Go for the Weaver here, but it's a level 4 Rubik. Can't even spell steal. Just drops the Sentry. They'll throw the Sunstrike. It isn't enough damage. The time lapse is available. And now he's going to turn around. This will be at least one support dead. Wait he's going to TP out. Flop, no TP. He'll fall. And it just completely backfires. And they get rushed as well. And this one going easy his way. 11-0. I don't really... I, I guess maybe they figure with Sunstrike they'd have the burst to bring down Mason, but... They did not have the damage. That's a level that's... 4 Rubik. Yep. That Rider does that point now. It's just hard for the bat. I'm just thinking, like, who's he going to initiate on? If he goes in, Wraith King's obviously a bad target. Although his ult is on cooldown, but just attack. not a target you want to focus anyway. I don't... Th the burst for the Weaver is possible with the lasso, but... They have silence to follow yeah. too. Weaver's probably the best, but... We definitely don't go, want to go on the Razor. He yeah, has, he's got Aegis. He has Aegis and he has Unstable Current. And yeah. Universe probably isn't a good choice here. He's got 1,000 HP and a 4 staff, so... He probably won't be in a position anyway. Yeah, he'll be the one looking to start the fight, so... And Visage has Gravekeepers, and it's just Visage. So, I don't know. I don't know either. There's no easy targets. And the thing is, if Liquid go for a gank, how obvious will it be? You look at EG's map vision right now, all the lanes are pushing past the river now. These ones are all well past it, and the bottom lane's really pushing in, so... They've just been boxed in, and Liquid need to find a way to make plays. It looks like at this point, they kind of want to get their level 6 on the Rubik, just farm TC up, but they'll smoke now. They'll make, they'll go for something here. The Forge Spirits, on the front lines, they're smoked up as well. Uh, who are they going to run into, though? That's the question. Probably not the Wraith King. Even with the Weaver, they've got to get the jump on him before he's able to time-lapse back or Sakuchi out. Do they have dust? They have sentries on in, on the Vengeful, but that's it. Yeah, and even if with the dust, he can always just time-lapse out of Visage it. Visage already TPing top, anticipating a gank. Mason in. Quake hasn't broken the smoke yet, though. This could work out pretty well. There's five heroes top. Maybe Liquid will get that big kill they desperately need. Mason. Oh boy, he's already Sakuchi. The sentries get plopped down. He has been cold snapped. The magic missile's there as well, but he just time lapses out, turns the fight, and now Liquid are in a headlong retreat. Bulba marching back. He'll drop an ice ball here, try to run, try to live. While meanwhile, the Batrider has last in the universe, but he's still alive. He won't fall here. Liquid, not the best focus fire. The Rubik also fell on the back. Why did he last the Weaver? I thought he was going to last the Weaver and get a kill. They were almost there. N I think nice. they thought they had him. No, you know what it was? He got fogged. They dropped the sentry a second late. And Weaver was already out of Sakuchi range. Then they magic missile him, cold snapped him, and I'm not sure why he didn't last him at that point. Because like right, yeah. right around here. Yeah, I know he got fucked with this. So yeah. yeah, I thought they could get him like as he was getting burst down with magic missiles. But still, 14 minutes in, Liquid still kill us. They just look lost. This is my yeah. first time casting Liquid in a long time. They, they, they've been kind of looking like this for a while. I thought that Fluff being reinstated as captain would change things around. I'm actually Radiant's lagging top under attack. Um, but... We're lagging to NA servers? Really? I don't know. Oh man, it's like BTS internet on the way, way up. It's ugly, man. It's, it's not lagging for me. Attacked. Maybe you should get your shit together. Gosh, computer. Come on. Come on now. Well, they're pushing top and they've got this SK here. Falling out of control four. already. He's almost got a Sanj up. Two heroes push through the mid. EG. Middle it it almost attack. just looks like an 
a, a pub stomp, honestly. They're up 13 to 0. Liquid, you asked when will they get on the board, LD, and. I'm afraid they may not get on the board. Oh, oh man. Maybe they want to get one kill before the game is over. This has to be one of the ugliest liquid performances. And just in terms of like how one side of the game has been that I've seen in a long time. Not to take anything away from EG, but they're using a stand-in too. Yeah. This is this is painful to witness. It's very painful. Well, they wanna they wanna leave with some honor. Yeah, my computer's lagging. Oh, well, eh. Well, huddling up their base, they have one T2 left. Don't worry, Rosh you're not missing a whole lot right now. Roshan will expire in a couple minutes, but maybe they can drag someone up the cliff in the T3 and get some kills. Well, they're smoked again. Here they go. But how is a smoke gank like this going to be successful? Mid lane's pushed they into the base. There's an observer war top. So if Liquid aren't showing heroes in the lanes, EG should realize it within a matter of seconds. And they're going to the enemy woods, but actually EG just Radio occupied their own jungle. Occupy Liquid's the name of the game here for EG. And they'll start pushing through the bottom lane. They do have a universe ready to hookshot in mid. They He's just looking to make plays at this point. The Lincolns comes out on the Weaver. There's still a tier 1 up mid. And if Radio Liquid don't back off right about now, the feeds could come at universe. Jumps in, but he does get lasso TC. Can he secure the first kill of Liquid's game? He's done it! Universe will fall, Quake for barely to live. But suddenly GG shows up domination. and they just they GG wanted the kill. out. They wanted the kill. That's true. They, get, they salvaged the game in that sense. They, they get at least a, a, a unblemished record of being broken and Liquid just call it. Most one sided game I've ever watched Liquid play. 20,000 death decision goal. The best summary for this game is Universe is a feeder. 0 1. Or 1 1. Jeez. Please, feed. please report. <laughs> feeder. Well, Liquid, they need a. They, I, are they even going to make the playoffs for America? How many teams comes out of America? I mean, if there is. is